Hello everybody, and welcome to another video. Elden Ring is an open world game, and as such, its story doesn't really have a set linear path. It'd be wrong to say that, because it kinda does, and most people will follow it on their first playthroughs. That path being fighting Margit, then Godric, and heading up to Lyernia and fighting Renala before making your way up the deck to Slift, or taking the side route and reaching the capital. If you reach the capital before obtaining two great runes from shard bearers like Godric or Renala, then you're blocked to entry from the capital by a light wall past the Draconic Tree Sentinel. And in my last video, I showcased this a little bit. Part of the reason I mentioned this is because I didn't know this on my first playthrough because, like many others, I beat Godric and Renala, so I had the two great rune requirement before reaching the capital at all. Now, knowing all this, you may think, okay, I have to kill a combination of two of the following, Godric, Renala, and Radon, because those are the three before the capital, right? Well, yeah, typically you could, but those aren't the only great runes we can get before the capital. By reaching Raya Lucaria and going down this lift to the handy dandy teleporter, we reach Volcano Manor and waste my time defeating these two dipshits. It took me so many tries. I was like level 30 or something and just having an awful time. Just to find out they absolutely opened nothing new to me. I did get a cool candlestick though. So I just ended up speaking to Raya and went through her small quest line. After that, the first boss I had to defeat was the Godskin Noble. Obviously, by this point, he'd shit on me. But after a small training arc, I came back, summoned my boy, and got right to business. Oh, that's horse shit. <laughs> Pussy. Get shit on, dumbass. Can't fat roll all over me anymore, bitch. After that genuinely nerve-wracking fight with the Godskin Noble, I made my way to our first shard bearer, and the first of the two great runes I needed. And along the way, I got extremely lucky with this genuinely 1% weapon drop. Once I make my way to the boss arena, I'd be lying if I said I didn't struggle a bit. As you can see, the first boss I chose for this run was Rykard. Thankfully, this boss fight is pretty gimmicky, so it wasn't too bad. I just kept getting really unlucky with some moves and my poor timing on some dodges. Oh, that's so annoying. I couldn't see. Oh. Alright, well, I, I definitely think I can beat him, so I'm just gonna sit here and attempt for a while. Oh, that's so annoying. That's so annoying. How do I how do I deal with that? Oh no. That's so annoying. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record the full fight due to some weird issue my Elgato had, but I got the last two minutes or so, and I got extremely lucky, because for some reason all my attacks were just staggering him, so I just did that until he died. And with that finally over, we have our first great rune, and that opens up the next one. If you watched my last video, then you might have an idea of who I'm talking about. Now that I have my first great rune, Vare spawns in front of the Rose Church, and after doing his quest line by going to the Rise of Blood Ruins and invading the summoning sign on the ground, because I didn't want to invade three people and waste like 20 minutes doing all that, and then getting some cooties on the napkin he gave me, I ended up in the Mogwin Dynasty. I spent a good bit of time preparing by getting the Purifying Crystal tier and leveling Latell. This fight also took me 
so much longer than it did to be Rikard due to the fact that Moog's a bitch. Fuck! Yeah. Yeah. Dead to one, baby. Uh, I thought Latell got his aggro for a sec. I looked away to double check that was his right thing. Oh. Oh, I got so close, but I rolled too early there and I used too many flasks. Fuck! Yes, baby, let's go. Whew. Let's fucking go. It was a super satisfying fight to complete, though, and thankfully this would be one of the hardest fights I'd have to complete for this game. Right? Finally, we can return to the capital, and the fight against Godfrey is extremely easy since I had to level up quite a bit to beat Mo. Wasn't even that hard. Oh, he's already dead. Let's go! My first talisman pouch! Let's fucking go! <laughs> and from there, we can head straight to Morgoth, and he's just as easy. Okay, bro, chill. My bad. When have you ever done that? Since when are you a fucking jumping spider? What the fuck? Uh... I didn't realize I was fighting Godric the fucking Beyblade. Or Margot the fucking Beyblade. Wow, buddy, grow up. I see why everybody saw this weapon is like busted. Cause it is. Holy. There you go. After beating Morgoth, the next step is to head to the mountains, but before that, we have some business to deal with. So I begin by traversing the sewers and decimating Moog again. Yikes. So we begin by defeating Moog and then running past him and having the worst time imaginable. I went too far. God damn it, I hate parkour in this game. No, I hit the corner. Are you kidding me? Bro, 
I have died so many times to this bullshit. Oh my god. My hands are so sweaty. Holy shit. As you may have guessed, this means that I'm getting the Frenzied Flame ending. I could have waited to the end to reveal that, but I know that none of you care about what ending I'm getting for this playthrough. I don't even know why I'm mentioning it now. It was just something that happened. After getting fungered, I traverse the mountaintops and then make it to the boss fight with the fire giant and realize I don't enjoy this fight at all. I just cheesed him by staying behind his ankles and holding a heavy attack out. And it was like 10 minutes of this and just not noteworthy, so I'm gonna brush past that stupid fight. After waking up in Fire Missoula, I ran to the place and fought the Forchkin duo. You fucked pussy. Uno mas. I made my way to the hardest boss in the mainline story, the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Unlike with the last one I fought, this Tree Sentinel can't be cheesed in the same- Oh, he's dead? Oh, well, I entered the boss fight against Malekith and holy did I have a trouble with this boss fight. For so long, it took more than a single session to beat. I genuinely struggled so much. I'll just let the footage speak for itself. I hate Malika. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I literally have no opening to attack him ever. That's so annoying. Uh, it's so annoying. Literally no time to do anything. God, I hate him. Like, what? I don't understand when I'm ever supposed to hit him. I actually had to overlevel a good amount because of just how hard of a time I was having. I honestly think it was a combo of me being ass at the game and having ruined my build as I didn't spec much into anything specifically. So I was overleveled, but I was also underpowered. I also couldn't respec because I decided I didn't want to ruin the challenge by going back and fighting the bosses I purposefully skipped. But with enough perseverance and a good night's sleep, here's my successful run. Okay, I just can't roll away there. Oh my god, that was so annoying. Holy shit. <laughs> had to spam that shit whenever he went for my summon. God, I hate him. I finally beat Malekith and I was so relieved because the game would be easier from here. Holy shit! Yeah, dying to Gideon is kind of pathetic, but in my defense, I only died once because of overzealousness. There you go. <laughs> Godfrey, of all bosses, also gave me a really hard time. I just don't know why. On all my other playthroughs, I swept the shit out of him. I did a Dark Moon Greatsword playthrough, and although it's an insanely good weapon, I beat the game at level 123. So I don't know why I struggled so much when I was like 150 plus. Once again, I'm pretty sure it was because of the awful stat specking that I was doing, but yeah. God damn it, I was like expecting him to do that so much sooner. Oh my god. Holy shit, that's annoying. What the fuck just happened there? I'm so confused. Oh 
It didn't drink the flask. Oh, that's so annoying. I hate this game so much. This game is so annoying. Holy fuck. Take a breath. Any point. Any point, like, just where he's not constantly attacking. Tenna save me. Oh, you're a goat. Oh, Latena, you beautiful, beautiful bastard. Oh, Latena. Oh, you beautiful, headless bastard. Oh, you saved my life. <laughs> God, I hate this fight. It's I fucked my build so hard. I did finally manage to beat him, though, and I was so relieved. Because the game would be so much easier for Kidding, of course. About the implication of struggling that it Radagon was just not a hard fight. Neither was the Elden Beast. Both have pretty easy to react to attacks. This wasn't too difficult of a fight, but I'll play the rest of it with my live commentary over it. Oh my god, this shit do reason. <sighs> I guess this just proved great sword uh, better. Oh nah, I just realized I was fat rolling against the fucking, <laughs> the Elden Beast. <laughs> I still should have lumped him because this, dude, the great sword is genuinely broken. It's crazy good. So with that, I beat the game. I finally accomplished what my first playthrough two years ago couldn't. Granted, I have 100% of the game achievement-wise on Xbox, and completed like three to four playthroughs since then, and I even went back and beat the game on my initial save. 
I also only started playing the game like two to three weeks ago and have very quickly fallen in love with the game again. I have other content ideas for Elden Ring, such as another weird route I could take to beat the game, and if that's something you'd all be interested in watching, please be sure to let me know. Have a great rest of your day, and adios. Boom, 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 boom.